Ever since I turned 60, I've been mindful of the fact that I've entered the final chapters of my life. If my life lasts for nine chapters, then I've got six down, three to go. And I want to make sure that those three chapters are lived to the fullest. And for that, I need to remain healthy, which is why when I turned 60, I started doing these six things. I've managed to get onto the York City walls today. No high wind stopping me entering at this time. So let's have a walk along these beautiful old medieval walls that once upon a time were built by the Romans to repel the Scots, I believe, from uh, sacking York, which ironically, a thousand years later, was sacked by the Vikings. But anyway, let's get into this topic. The six things that I prioritise after 60 to ensure that I have a healthy and enjoyable life. My concern when I entered this stage of my life, my 60s, was that I'd end up like my Uncle Archie. He's 94 now and his life went decidedly downhill from his early 80s. That's when he lost his wife. And ever since then, even though he puts on a very brave face, he comes across as a very positive man. He's been very lonely. He doesn't go on any holidays. He doesn't do much at all. He's got no family apart from me and he's got no friends. And even his beloved dog, of 14 years died a couple of years ago. When I look at his life, I kind of think to myself, well, if that's what the future holds, I am a little bit scared. So my house is over there somewhere. So I'm very close to the York City walls. Somewhere over there is where I live. I can't decide if Archie's been lucky or not. He's lived till he's 94 years of age and that's a great age and that's a good thing. But he spent the last 12 or 13 years on his own since his wife died. And before that, his wife was ill for about seven years, eight years, something like that. So the reality is the quality of his life hasn't been brilliant since his early 70s. Now he retired at 63, around the same age as I am now, which means he only got 10 good years to do the things that he wanted to do. And that's on my mind. I would hope that I'm gonna have a lot more time than that with my wife and healthy. But there are no guarantees, no guarantees at all. Whatever my final three chapters hold, I wanna make the most of them, which is why I've implemented these six things since I turned 60. And the first thing is prioritizing sleep. I find that these days I can't function unless I have at least seven hours of sleep. And to that end, I make sure that I'm in bed by midnight and I make sure that I don't drink any coffee after noon and I don't drink any alcohol after about eight o'clock. Oh, I'm a bit out of puff from walking up those uh, stairs onto this wall. I just needed to pause for a rest there. <laughs> Can't believe I was out of breath after coming up one flight of stairs. That's not good news. Maybe I'm not in as good a health as I thought I was, but uh, anyway, back on to sleep. So as I was saying, I don't drink after eight o'clock in the evening and never during the week. Just have a little bit of a tipple on a weekend. I don't drink coffee after noon. Um, I have three or four cups in the morning to get me going, but after that, no coffee. I don't want anything that's gonna disrupt my sleep. And the other thing I do to ensure that I get a good night's sleep is that I go out at sunset and I look towards the setting sun of the skies to get those final rays in there to help set my body clock. The other thing that I do at the opposite end of the day is that in the morning, as soon as the sun is rising, I'm outdoors looking at the rising sun for the same reason, to get those rays into my eyes to set my body clock. Because as I said earlier, I just cannot function unless I get at least seven hours of sleep. On the subject of sleep, there are two other things that I do to ensure that I get a good night's sleep and I'm full of energy and raring to go the next day. One of them is last thing at night, I take a supplement. I take a ZMA, zinc magnesium, which I find helps enormously. It's supposed to keep you calm. But yeah, I always have a good night's sleep after having a ZMA tablet. And the other thing I do is I don't set an alarm. I rise naturally with the sunlight I let my body decide when it's time to wake up and uh, I don't want anything interrupting my sleep patterns. I just want to wake up at the end of my sleep cycle. And those are just a couple of things that I do to make sure that I've got plenty of energy for the day ahead. I've exited the York City walls. 
It was very busy on there, a lot of tourists in the city today because it's a beautiful day and the walls are very narrow, didn't make it easy to uh, film this video so I've decided to carry on in the uh, York Museum Gardens. The second thing that I've prioritised after I turn 60 is that I've developed a routine which I stick to. It's a routine that I've been tweaking probably for the last uh, 10 years, maybe even slightly longer. The routine is something that I needed when I left work. I found that going from the routine of work to being retired, I actually found the transition quite difficult. So this is how, how my routine goes. I don't have an alarm. I wake with the, the natural sunlight and the very first thing I do is I head to the kitchen and I drink two large glasses of water and uh, I make myself and my wife a cup of coffee. Then I put her around for a couple of hours reading, never the news, always something motivational or educational. Um, at the moment I'm uh, reading a book called The Path by uh, a Harvard professor. I'll leave a link in the description which is all about uh, the ancient wisdom of the of the Far East which I, I find fascinating. After a couple of hours um, I find my creative juices are flowing and that's often when I'll settle down to do a bit of work if I do any work at all which I try not to do on a Monday and a Friday. So work is typically Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday so I'll usually sit down at my desk in my study around about 10 o'clock, juices flowing and come up with ideas for these videos. That's my priority at the moment and I tend to work in bursts of about an hour, two hours tops, taking a break in the middle of about 15 minutes just to get up from my desk, have a move around, that's usually when I have another cup of coffee and then back to work until around about lunchtime. Lunchtime's always a long lunch, I always take at least two hours, get out into the city, have a bit of a walk around before I settle back into my office around about two o'clock-ish for another couple of hours of more mundane work. I find that by the afternoon my energy levels are starting to dip a little bit so that's when I get all my kind of boring mundane tasks out of the way and sometime around about I guess half past three something like that I'll usually uh, head out again for another walk which is what I'm doing now uh, and record uh, these videos. So that's my uh, my routine until the afternoon. Around about six o'clock ish I usually eat my wife and I take it in turns to cook. I love cooking, so does she. So we both uh, have a go at preparing meals. After we've eaten our evening meal, we would settle down about seven o'clock-ish for a bit of leisure time. Now, I know a lot of you are not going to like this, but I really do enjoy watching television for a couple of hours. Um, I love watching films. I love watching um, American crime series like Bosch, Breaking Bad, The Ozarks anything like that, love it. And that's how I relax, that's, that's my leisure time. Uh, I settle down for a few hours of that with my wife until 9, 9.30ish, sometimes 10 o'clock. And then at around about 10 o'clock, I head for bed and I settle down for an hour or two with a good book before lights out at 12 o'clock. And that is pretty much my routine. The days of partying, late nights, the stresses and pressures and work are long since over. Isn't that what retirement is supposed to be about? I mean, I was having a chat with my good friend Andy this morning, and one of the things he said really resonated with me. He said that retirement is supposed to be like childhood. You can do whatever you want, when you want, without the pressures. And he's right. And that's what my routine does. It gives me that flexibility. It means that by the time those lights go out at 12 o'clock, I'm ready for bed and I sleep really well. I never get up in the night and I don't wake until about seven o'clock the next day. The third thing I prioritise is walking and moving. What I do is quite diverse when it comes to walking. I have these kind of walks like this afternoon where I go out for an hour, possibly two hours, have a bit of a walk around. This is such a beautiful city that I managed to get three, four, sometimes five miles in doing that. Plus it's time on my own which I'll come on to later in the video. Those are my kind of pottering about kind walks. The second type of walk that I do is the first thing in the morning after I've had my coffee, after I've uh, got myself going for the day, I head out to do a 15-20 minutes around York Minster to get those first sunshine rays into my eyes. I talked about that in point one to help set my body clock and to make sure that I get good sleep. Then there's what I call the real 
exercise type walk um, and that's where I'll go out for 30 minutes and I'll do interval walking. The way that works is that I'll walk for three minutes fast then I'll slow down for three minutes and then I'll start again and I do five sets of that to try and keep me active, give me my version of cardio because I don't do any other type of cardio, that's, that's it. The other type of walking that I do uh, often is that I often get my hiking boots, get my hiking pack and I'll go off up into the Yorkshire Dales or I'll go into the moors or I'll go to the coast often with my wife and we'll do oh, a good seven, eight, maybe even ten miles uh, with walking poles, with a backpack, with our hiking boots on uh, and that's, that's, that's fantastic. I love that kind of walking. It tends to be more spring, summer and autumn, less in the winter. Yeah, so that's it. Those are my walks. Those are the things that I like to do when it comes to walking. Now, on top of the walking, I also believe in keeping moving throughout the day. Now, I live in a four-storey townhouse, so it's got a lot of stairs, and I make sure that I'm up and down those stairs all the time, especially on the days when I'm working, which I talked about in the previous point. I like to leave my desk after about an hour and walk down, go down the stairs, go down to the ground floor. My office is in the top floor, get some steps in, maybe make myself a cup of coffee, have a drink of water, but keep moving. I like to keep moving. One of the things that my Uncle Archie recommends, if you watch one of my earlier videos, is that I asked him what one of his secrets was, and he said to keep moving, keep going. And uh, yeah, I guess he's right, and that's how I do that. Those are the things that fall under that point about walking, moving, and just keeping going. The fourth thing I've prioritised after 60 is I like to do strength training. I've read a lot of scientific papers on this, but I'm no expert. This is how I would summarise those papers. If you don't use it, you'll lose it. And what that basically means is if you don't work your muscles, you're going to lose them. And the scientific term for that, I believe, is sarcopenia, muscle wastage. And one of the reasons you see so many old people with, with Zimmer frames and walking frames and looking quite frail is that they don't strength train, and they never have. In my opinion, especially if you're a man, you really have to. And I don't want to be like my Uncle Archie, for example. He's 94 now and he's been walking with a frame now for quite some time. And I know him well enough to know that he's never strength trained. He's never done anything like that. He just did walking and walking his dog, walking with his wife, that kind of thing. And now he's kind of suffering for that and he has done for quite some time in that he's lost a lot of strength in his, in his muscles, particularly in his legs. I don't want to be that man. I work out at least twice a week, sometimes three times. Um, if it's three times, I'll do two days uh, upper body and I'll do one day legs. I don't pussy about it either. I, I lift some weights that, that develop a sweat. I like to work in an eight to 12 rep range. I like to do three, four, five sets and, and push myself, myself through it. I like to feel that my muscles are exhausted after I've done my workouts. Some weeks I only manage to get into the gym a couple of times a week. And if that's the case, I'll usually do uh, a bit of a mixed body workout covering upper and lower. So strength training is on my agenda. Now I am by no means a bodybuilder, a power lifter or an expert, but I've seen the benefit. My muscle mass has been maintained and even grown over the last 10 years through doing this. I'm going to keep going. I don't want to ever stop as far as I'm concerned. The gym and lifting weights is very much part of my routine and it's absolutely vital to make sure that I don't end up walking with a frame when I'm in my 80s. The fifth thing that I've prioritised is food and drink. Now, I've been a little bit led on this by the fact that as I record this video, I've got a gallbladder complaint. I've got gallstones. I've been diagnosed with gallstones and in two months from today, I will be having my gallbladder out, which I won't lie, I'm very nervous about. So over the last 12 months in particular, I've been eating incredibly clean because I've had to. Very little fat, hardly, well, no fat, quite, quite frankly, just uh, a bit of olive oil, uh, nuts, avocados. And I've very much moved on to a diet which is lean proteins like chicken, fish, vegetables, vegetables, uh, certain fruits, yogurts, uh, kimchi, sauerkraut, and it's been brilliant. I mean, I, I won't lie, uh, I've been amazed at how good I feel considering I've got this complaint. So uh, I may be forced into it. I might have to continue that kind of diet after my operation. I don't know. We'll see. But the one thing I do um, regret is that I didn't implement that kind of diet before. It's really only in the last uh, 12 months. The two years prior to that, I was eating a lot healthier after we moved to the, to the city here in York. I started prioritizing healthy eating. It was a lot easier. 
being able to shop daily for fresh vegetables and things like that. Before that, I'll be honest, in my 50s, I was eating curries, fish and chips, burgers. I was never into ultra processed foods like snack foods, crisps, anything like that, or cakes. So I've always been eating, I guess, semi healthily. But now food, I'd see it as nutrition. Um, I can't avoid it because of the gallbladder problem, but I do now see it as a permanent a habit or a permanent routine that I'm gonna be sticking to. The other thing that links to that is booze. I've never been a boozer. I've never been teetotal, but I've never been the one for, for going out and having a, a lot of drinks. So that one's really easy for me. But since I turned 60, I've cut back even more. I barely drink at all. If I do drink, it might be the odd glass of wine at the weekend. I do like a cocktail. Old fashioned is my favorite, made with bourbon. So I do have a cocktail occasionally on a weekend, but most of the time I stick to water. I'm not really bothered about, uh, about getting boozed up. The only exception to that rule is that I do like a drink when I'm on holiday. Uh, I like a few beers. Uh, when we're in Portugal, there's some fantastic wines. So I do like a glass of wine, rosé or red out there, and a glass of port. But when I'm back in York, I'm back home. Now, booze is off the menu, probably four, five, even six days a week, and I feel great for it. The final thing, my sixth thing that I have prioritized after I turn 60 is solo time. Time on my own, absolutely vital. I need it for my mental health. I think the main reason why I value it so much is that I'm an introvert. I mean, I'm not a raging shy type of introvert who, who can't hang out with people at all, but I do need space. I need time to recharge my batteries and solo time does that. The type of things that I do in solo time is that I like to go out on long walks of between between five and 10 miles, preferably in nature, not around the city, too many distractions in the city. So I love to do that, I like to go out on walks. And the other thing I do is a thing that I picked up oh, a long time ago called micro adventures. And the type of thing that I would do as a micro adventure is that I would go down to the train station with no real plans. Uh, the train station's about 15, 20 minutes from me. And I'll take a look at the, uh, the board, see what trains are coming in, where they're going. And I'll book myself a ticket on train line to the next train, wherever it's going. As long as it's not too far, I would hasten to add. So the sort of places I might head off to is I might head off up to Newcastle for a wander around, or I might head over to the coast to have a, a bit of a look around uh, Scarborough, Whitby. So uh, anything that's about an hour on the train so I can go put around for a few hours on my own and then catch the train back uh, in time for tea time. So micro adventures and solo time, fantastic, very good for my soul. Uh, I would recommend them to you even if you're not an introvert. So those are the six things that I have prioritized after I turn 60 to make sure that I've got every chance of having 30 healthy, active and happy years. I don't want to be an invalid. I don't want to be somebody who needs walking frames and things like that. And I don't want to be somebody who's ill for decades. Um, so I'm trying to give myself every chance to be that person. If you need help with your retirement, and you'd like me to help you map out a plan, get to where you want to be. If you're finding it a little bit difficult at the moment, you're finding it a little bit of a struggle, well then just book yourself into my calendar. There's a, a link in the description to this uh, video below. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate you taking your time to watch this video. Um, if you'd like to find out some of the other things that would be useful so that you have a good life uh, after 50, after 60 and in retirement, then I suggest you watch the video that's coming up on the screen right now. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.